Hey everybody, it's your favorite tech trainer, Bren Brewer. Today we're going to get right in and we are going to do the command and DocuSign workflow. I'm going to go real fast. So two things we need to make sure of. We need to click on our name when we're in command. And you need to log in a command at agent.kw.com, agent.kw.com. Now click on your name and click on settings and you need to make sure that your DocuSign is connected before we get started. Make sure your DocuSign shows connected and the current status is connected, right? Now we're going to click on opportunities. If you are on a team, make sure you're in your team to create an opportunity. If you are in coaching, make sure you're in the coaching account to start an opportunity. Click on create opportunity, select your opportunity type. We're going to do buyer today. Find your client, put in all your dates. Let's do active and searching, and then we're going to click create. Once you're inside your opportunity, you're going to click on documents. You're going to make sure you're in the correct folder on the left hand side. If it's a listing, you're going to be at listed under contract or closed. A buyer is going to be consultation under contract and closed. I'm actually going to click on under contract for my buyer. Here you can see all the documents that need to be turned in. And now I'm just going to click on start a transaction. Now you can see all my documents have come into the DocuSign room. So what you will do now, you will go to each document and make sure it's filled in. So that's exactly what I'm doing. Client one, client two, you would put their names in here. Buyer, it's going to be from our office on this form. If you have questions, please reach out. We're going to put today's date. You're going to put whether they choose to hire or not hire an inspector. Then click save and close. One to four family. At this point, if you haven't found a house, you're probably not going to do that yet. And then your residential buyer tenant representation agreement, you're definitely going to get that one done. You're going to put your client's name. So you're going to put their first name and their last name, their address, put all this in, fill all this out, fill out your market area, fill out your dates, put if you want intermediary or not, put your commission, and I always choose both commissions just in case a buyer turns into a renter or a renter turns into a buyer. Put your protection period. Our office is in Harris County, so that's always going to be Harris County. Put any addenda, check marks next to any addenda that you will be including. Broker license number, broker associate signature, client's first name should be there and last name, and the client two's first name and last name should be there. Click save and close, and then just repeat the process for all the documents that you need to get signed. Okay, so now I'm ready to get get these documents signed. So I'm just going to select them in the top left corner of each document. So the ones I want to get signed. And then this row of icons pops up. I'm just going to click create envelope. Buyer agent will be signing. Buyer one and buyer two will be signing. And then I'll click continue. So now I have my documents. Add recipients. So right now for training purposes, I'm just putting generic so you can see, but this would be buyer agent. Right, so Bren would be the buyer agent, buyer one and buyer two. So you also have a signing order here. If you don't want a signing order, you want everyone to get everything at the same time, you will unselect this box. You will select it and choose who gets what first if you do want a signing order. So the buyer agent will get it first, buyer one will get it second, and buyer two will get it third. This person has to complete the documents before this person gets them. This person has to complete the documents before this person gets them. You can click here to add a recipient. You can click Click over here on needs to sign and change what happens with this person. You can customize access codes or private messages on each as well. And this button here that looks like a trash can is to remove someone from the envelope. If you scroll down a little further, you can add an, a message to the email that goes out. You can do that. And so when you're ready to move on, you have all the documents you need, you would just click next. Now, Say you forgot a document and you wanted to add one, you would just click upload and you can say you could browse your computer, use a template or add a document from your room. So if you wanted to add a PDF into this, you could do that. And if you wanted to remove a document, you would just click the X above each document when you're hovering your mouse over it. I'm fine with what I got now. We're just going to go ahead and click next. 
This is going to take you to where your documents should all have the signing fields already ready for you. You can see here in the top left, buyer agent, buyer one, and buyer two. These are all color coordinated. Now when you're doing this, this should have your name, your client's name, and your client's name not these things. So you can see just by scrolling through that everything has the correct signing fields on it. So I'm just going to scroll through. Everything looks good. This will be the last chance for you to check your documents and make sure they're filled out properly. And also with the latest update, you can now edit your documents inside of this envelope. Now please be aware the changes do not take place inside of the room. So make sure that if you are editing anything, that, it, that you remember it does not go back to the room document. So anytime you edit something, like I didn't put anything here, so I should have put one, two, three, four, main street. So now you have the ability to edit these documents inside of the envelope, which is a huge update in case you missed something. So give your documents a one over. If you need to pull a field over, you just click in the top left box, make sure you're on the correct signer and you click on the field you want to pull over. So if the signature field was missing, you would come over, click, hold, and drag, and pull a signature field over, just like that. I'm actually going to delete that because I don't need it. Everything looks really good. And now I would just go and click send to sign these. Now that's going to go directly to my email for me to sign. So let me show you what your clients are going to see when they get the email. It's going to look like this. Please DocuSign. You're going to click, your clients will also click this. Review the documents. They need to click on continue and start. And then when they click, it's going to say, do they want to use this? Click you, click to adopt it and then click use. And then just scroll through the documents and sign. Once they're done, they need to click finish or it will not come back to you. They do not need to create an account. They can just click on no thanks at that point. If they want to create an account, they definitely can. Okay. So now you can see my DocuSign document envelope shows completed. Documents here are in the room and the signed documents have not come in yet, but you can see the blue forms. These are fillable forms. They are still there. And if I refresh, now you can see the signed documents are available. So now what I want to do is I want to click on actions, add folder, and I'm going to type in under contract. I'm going to put the one in front of it so that it goes to the top. And then I'm going to click on create. And all those documents that I just got signed, which you can tell they're signed because they're green, I'm going to select those. I'm going to click move. I'm going to click please select a destination, say folder in current room, and then find my under contract folder and click move. So now all of my signed documents are up here in my under contract folder and my fillable forms are still in my room docs folder. Now I'm going to go back over to command so I can turn my documents in. When I do that, I want to make sure and refresh the page if I haven't gone back in here since I did this. I'm going to refresh my page, make sure I'm in the correct folder. Make sure I'm attaching documents or files from DocuSign. And then I'm going to click in the working folder box and select my under contract folder. That's going to allow me to only pull up the documents that I need. Then I'm going to match this document to the one that I got signed. So information about brokerage services to information about brokerage services. Buyer rep agreement to the buyer rep agreement. General information and notice to general information and notice. Wire fraud to wire fraud. Inspector information to inspector information. Now you can see I'm missing some documents. I still have to get an executed contract, do my buyer's acknowledgement, and do the third party financing if it is there. Another thing you need to do is go get your tax record. Now. When I have everything completed, I'm just going to click this submit to MC button. When everything required is turned in and you can tell it's turned in because you'll have or uploaded at least because the status will say uploaded instead of not uploaded and you will have words here. You can click on this and you can make sure you've uploaded the correct one. You can scroll down and you can see yes this one is signed and it is filled in. From here if I need a copy I can download or print. 
going to click X there, but as soon as you have them all ready, you're going to click Submit. Once you've clicked Submit, that's going to go to the compliance team and they will come back and they the status here will change to either approved or returned. If it says returned, it'll show you in your list of documents which documents have been returned and what you need to do to correct those. And that's it. That's how you do your DocuSign workflow from command to DocuSign back to DocuSign. Let me know if you have any questions and let me know in the comments if you like the new update where you can change the form inside of the envelope. I'm kind of loving that update.